evening from the kitchen folks. In today's film I'm going to be making a slow cooked beef rendang. So what the heck's a rendang? Well a rendang is a Malaysian curry. It's not thick with sauce, it's not a really saucy curry but it's one that's got a nice sticky sauce around the meat and the vegetables that are in it. So here are my key ingredients. I'm using 400 grams of tender lean diced beef. I've got half a tub of white mushrooms just there. I've got some fresh chilies. I've got a red capsicum pepper, some pre-trimmed spring onions, one tomato, two white onions. I've got easy lemongrass. Now you should use fresh lemongrass, but I couldn't get any, so I'm using this instead. I've got some ginger paste, which I'm using instead of a piece of ginger root. I've got some, this is not something that you would expect to go in there, mango chutney with lime and ginger. Now, first of all, the recipe does require ginger and it requires lime. It doesn't require mango, but I couldn't find any lime anywhere. So I've got this in the cupboard, so I'm going to use it. I've had a taste and it is very limey, so I'm going to use that as a substitute. There's coconut milk, salt. I've got apple cider vinegar and brown sugar, which I'm using instead of tamarind paste, because again, I couldn't find tamarind paste, but these two together will uh, replicate that, and olive oil. So there's a couple of changes and substitutions in there. It's my version of a beef rendang, but I think it's still gonna come out tasting very much like it should. So let's crack on. So even though this is a slow cooker recipe, I am gonna begin with a frying pan, because I want to sear the beef that I've got in here. These are just nice beef pieces. So I'm gonna put some olive oil into the frying pan and strictly speaking this recipe requires vegetable oil not olive oil but I use olive oil at home and then I'm just going to simply put my beef pieces in there and what I want to do is sear these so that they don't lose all the juices out into the recipe itself. I'll just get these in the pan and then I'll come back to you. So I've got the beef in the frying pan on the hob I'm just going to pop this on now. I'm going to turn that down and I just want it to come to a little bit of a sizzle and I'm going to turn it over to brown both sides of it. Whilst that's happening, let's crack on with the onions. So with my onions, I'm just going to top and tail them. I'm going to take off the outer layer. And then I want to chop these down into nice small pieces. Like so. I'm going to get some olive oil into frying pan number two. So as you can see there, the beef is browning nicely in that one. And then I'm going to get my white onion into that pan. And again, gas on. And I'm going to let that come to a sizzle. So while these are sizzling away, I'm going to put a bit of salt into each pan. And now I'm going to prep my mushrooms. So I'm just going to give them a wash first under a hot tap. Because I've noticed that they have some bits of soil on some of them. I think that's done a good job. So now on the board I'm simply going to cut each mushroom into two, so cutting them in half. I'll come back to you when I've done them. And then I'm going to get my mushrooms in the same pan as the beef. So next my red chilies, and I'm simply going to break these down with this rocking knife. Seeds and all. It does say on the recipe that I looked at to remove the seeds, but I like a bit more fire. And these are not particularly hot chilies. Now I'm going to put the chilies in the same pan as the onions. So I'm just going to move them around a little bit, mix them together. Onions are feel nice and soft now. Do the same with the mushrooms and the beef. I just want to start them in terms of, uh, so they're not going in raw into the slow cooker. Next up, it's my capsicum pepper. And with this one, I'm simply going to take the end off like so, then cut around the core remove that so I've just got the empty pepper take the stalk out and then I've got that I can use as well also all good flesh and I'm simply going to cut this into rough chunks no particular uh, size in mind just going around like that and just as with the mushrooms the red pepper is going to go in with the beef so for my tomato, I'm simply going to cut it into nice thin slices. 
So here's my slow cooker. It's a Morphe Richards and this one has got a ceramic dish in it. I've preheated it already. So I'm just going to add a bit of oil into the bottom. And then I'm going to put my sliced tomato on the bottom of the slow cooker. Then lid on. I'll come back to that in a second. Right, I'm happy that the beef is seared so I'm going to turn that off. And I'm going to put the beef into the slow cooker on top of the tomato. All the juice with it as well. Lid back on. So here's my brown sugar and I'm going to add some of that into this glass jug. Just, just cover the bottom, make it maybe almost a centimetre deep. That will do. And then on top of the brown sugar I'm going to add the apple cider vinegar to make my fake tamarind paste or my replacement tamarind paste. It's got the sweetness and the sharpness that tamarind paste would have and I'm going to just simply stir this together. The sugar will mostly dissolve. So there we are with that. And yep, you guessed it, that's now going into the slow cooker when that goes. There's not a lot of liquid going in this other than the coconut milk. And obviously the slow cooker does extract a lot of liquid from the vegetables, so it tends to be quite saucy what it makes anyway. Lid back on. Next up, my onions and chilies are going on top of the beef and everything else that's in the slow cooker. And again, I'm just going to spread those over the top to make a nice layer. So now I'm going to add some flavours into here. So here is the mango chutney with lime and ginger, and I'm going to put two generous uh, teaspoonfuls of this into there. Followed by the ginger itself, and I'm just going to put one generous teaspoonful of that in there. And then with a fresh teaspoon for the lemongrass paste, I'm going to put one, two nice rounded blobs in there. Lid back on. And then finally I'm going to pour the coconut milk on top of everything that's in there. And I'm just going to give the top of it a little bit of a stir to break up some of that paste so the flavours begin to pour through and infuse. And that'll do for now. I'm going to give it a bigger stir in a little while but not quite yet. So I've got one more last minute step which is to cut the spring onions on top of the mixture. Notice that I've not cooked the spring onions like I did everything else. That's purposeful. Right, so that's what it looks like now. Lid goes on and it's now going to cook on high for 90 minutes, then I'll come back to it. Okay, 90 minutes later, I'm just going to take the lid off. This hasn't turned out like I was expecting from, certainly from this viewpoint. This is absolutely more saucy than what it should be and it's definitely because of the slow cooker and the fact that it does create a lot of liquid when you cook with it. If I'd done this in a pan then a lot of this would have evaporated off and it would have been nearer what it should be. But the other thing to note is that this is very pale and a rendang should be a lot darker. Now the recipe that I've adapted for this rendang came from BBC Good Food and they suggested using coconut milk but in a lot of the other recipes it says to use desiccated coconut and I think that's what I should have done and it wouldn't have been this pale because it's meant to be a much darker brown a rendang and definitely not as saucy as that. So lid goes back on. I'm going to put it onto medium now for one more hour and that'll be it. So I'll come back to it in an hour's time and we'll see what it's like then. Right, see you in a bit. So I'm on the final 30 and just to point out that I've got a naan bread in the oven and I've got some rice over there to go with this. It might not turn out exactly as I'd anticipated but I'll tell you what, I'm blooming looking forward to it. Okay folks, cooking is done. I am turning off and it's time to dish up. So I'm going to get some rice into the dish, make a nice 70s circle. Right, lid off. Definitely too saucy for a rendang, but never mind. Let's see what it tastes like. Looks pretty good, I must admit, but it doesn't look like I'd anticipated it looking. There's some good lumps in there. That's what you want with a rendang. 
So in terms of appearance, I can't say that I'm disappointed with that. It does look quite nice. The proof is in the tasting. So I'm going to get straight in there and it's steamy hot. That's one good thing about the slow cooker. It comes out piping every time. Right, despite appearance, I've got to say, 100% flavour wise, that is rendang. The lemongrass and the chilli, and the sort of sweet and sourness from the brown sugar and the apple cider vinegar, which would have been tamarind paste, is massive. Flavours are, are brilliant. I'm not sure that beef's the best ingredient. I think chicken would have done better than this, actually. The beef is really good. Slightly chewier than I'd like it to be, but not too bad. I think chicken in this dish would be an improvement. But honestly, it does taste like a rendang. It genuinely does, even though it doesn't look like one, and even though I've had to substitute ingredients. The end product is actually really lovely. Anyway, folks, I hope you've enjoyed the film. This has been a partial success. It doesn't quite look like I want it to do, and it's more saucy than I want it to be, but flavour-wise, it's absolutely spot on. And I guess that's what happens when you cook it in a slow cooker. So next time I do a rendang, I'll do it on the hob, and we'll have a completely different result, I'm quite sure. But I'm not disappointed with this. It's still very nice. If you've enjoyed the film, Please give us a like, leave us a comment, subscribe to the channel, all those things. It helps the channel grow and it made me really, really very appreciative. Thank you very much. I'm going to enjoy this tonight. I have no idea what the next film will be. But anyway, hope you enjoy them all. And I'll catch you on the next film, whatever that may be. It's probably going to be a homebrew one, to be honest. But I can't promise anything. Right. Catch you next time. Mmm. That's lovely. The film that you've just watched is a Moss Home and Garden production. You can find more by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk. I'd just like to say thank you very much for supporting my YouTube channel and for watching my films. It really is very much appreciated. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to receive future updates about the Home and Garden films which I upload. You can find my YouTube channel by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk Please click on the red subscribe button. When you've done that, a little bell will appear. If you press that also, then you'll get future updates about the films which I upload. If you like my films, if you like my style of filming, then you might also like my travel channel, which you will find by going to youtube.com forward slash Stuart Moss or type in www.mosstravel.tv Again, if you could subscribe to that channel, it would be hugely appreciated. If you'd like to get Moss Home and Garden updates on Facebook, then please open Facebook and do a search for Moss Home and Garden, and you will find the page. If you like the page, then you will get future updates on there. And if you'd like to connect on Instagram for home, garden and travel photography, as well as some stories, then my username is Stu Moss, S-T-U-M-O-S-S. If you'd like to connect on Twitter, then my username is at Stuart Moss. And if you'd like to contact me about film usage or any other issue, please just email me on stewmosshomegarden at gmail.com. Once again, thank you very much for supporting my channel, for watching my films. I do appreciate it. I'd just like you all to have a great day.